Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we are doing an area and perimeter of various shapes worksheet. This is on materials.com. Make sure to check out the website. There will be a link in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Now, before we start this, it looks like there's six problems here of, as it says, various shapes. We need to identify what each of these shapes are. Now, you might get them confused because they do look kind of similar. So let's start with the basics. The first basic we have here is the rectangle. So this is a rectangle. What makes it a rectangle is we have two sides of opposite length. You'll notice that it doesn't have it written in. Well, it, the reason why it doesn't have it written in is because you need to be able to assume that it's the same. So those two sides are the same, and then these two sides are the same. We can call this one the width and this one the length, okay? So this is a rectangle, but we have a couple other shapes that I want to mention here. We have here a triangle. That's fairly obvious because it's got three sides, tri meaning three. Okay, so we have the triangle there. Uh, and now we have these other shapes. So we have one, two... Uh, this one's not the same thing. So these two up here at the top, these are parallelograms, which I'll talk about in a second. And then finally, we have the trapezoid, as that backup pops up in my stream. Well, let's back that back up up. And we have the trapezoids. And I'm going to talk about why these two are trapezoids. Now, I'm going to break down the shapes. For this uh, exercise, um, I'm going to show just the formulas and the formulas will lead us through the problems themselves so if you need to memorize the formulas that's fine i prefer understanding the concept and why it works and then using that but if you need a further uh, explanation that i have more videos on this but i'm going to briefly go over this so the rectangle is the one in blue here that is just length times width and that will tell us the area of that shape i forgot to write width on here let me get that real quick so this is the width width generally consider the shorter side but it doesn't honestly matter parallelogram consider like a rectangle and you just step on it and it squishes and kind of slides over a little bit that's a parallelogram it's a little bit different it's called the base now and then the height is this distance here from the base all the way up and it's actually a perpendicular angle 90 degrees there and that's uh the height right there that's called the height so don't multiply it by that length there multiply it by the height straight up from the base now I put here the triangle in green within the rectangle because it's the same formula as a rectangle. You multiply the two dimensions as long as they're perpendicular, but it's half the area. So if you look here, we said this whole thing is half the total area of the rectangle. So that's why we divide by two because it's half of it. Okay, so that's the triangle. And then finally the trapezoid. This guy's kind of a compound shape here. We have some triangles, two triangles, and we have a rectangle here. So that's why it's a little bit more complicated than it was before. And this is our equation for the trapezoid. Notice that we're adding these two bases. This one's B1 and B2. It doesn't matter which one you call which as long as you add them together as designated here. You're gonna multiply by this distance H that's the distance between the two bases, and you're going to divide by two because it kind of borrows that from the triangle. Now that we kind of talked over the basics, let's start with the easiest one, the rectangle. What we're going to do here is we're simply just going to area equals the length times the width. So we're going to multiply our two dimensions together. That's 2 times 3.2. Okay, make sure that this is a dot. That's a decimal. First one's a dot. The next one's a decimal. And just to show you, you don't need a calculator. I'm going to go like this. And you do the standard algorithm. Blah, 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 and we're done. 6.4, but don't forget the units. Feet squared. That backup keeps popping up. I got to disable that somehow. 6.4 feet squared. So there we go. That's the rectangle. Rewind if you need a further explanation, but pretty basic. You just multiply the dimensions together. Let's scoot over to the triangle. Triangle. Now, it was different than I had it drawn, but basically we're looking for uh, the base here. So let me draw the base. This is our base and our height is the distance from the base to that other point. Boy, that is super annoying that iPad not backed up. I know that. <laughs> you don't have to remind me. So now the base here is this distance here. Okay, that's basically a side length. And then the height is that distance there. And it tells us H is actually 4.6 to make it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to do 4.6 times 4.3. And don't forget, we're going to divide by 2 when we're done. So we're going to do 4.6 times 4.3. Okay, so I get 18. Carry it. We get 13. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 0. We got 24. 2. 16. 18. And then, what was this first one? It was an 8. Yeah. So we get 8. Seven, nine, one. 
move the decimal place over two times to get 19.78. I still have to divide this by two. So just in case you, some of you have not seen this yet, but you could use a calculator at this point, but 19.78 divided by two, well, two goes into 19 nine times, that's 18, drop down the one. Doing some long division for you just to show you that it is possible to do this. Um, I'm ignoring the decimal place for now. Two goes into 17, eight times, that's 16. Get that out of here. And that's one after we subtract, and we have eight, and that's nine. So it's, uh, sorry, forgot to put the decimal correct spot. It's 9.89, and we need the correct units, yards squared, okay? So 9.89. Now let's move on to some of these ones. Why are these ones parallelogram? The reason why I know this is a parallelogram is because it doesn't label this. If it was like some other shape, they would label that side, but we're supposed to assume it's just 2.7. So we're going to multiply 2.7 times 4.2. Okay, and just to speed it up, now that you can see this multiplication and uh, you've seen me do it a few times, this is up to you to do this multiplication. So we're going to do 2.7 times 4.2, as I said, and make sure you don't multiply by that 4.4. That's a trap. That's not the distance we want. We want the distance between the two bases, and we get 11.34 when we're done. But don't forget the units, km squared. Again, this one is a parallelogram because we have this side labeled. This side not labeled, this side. So there's too many sides not labeled. We have to assume that this is also 5.6, but don't do 5.9 times 5.8. We want the two sides that are making a T with each other, okay? So if I go scroll down here to my example, this makes a T. We want those two sides, not the sides that are kind of like going in the same direction, okay? So we want 5 point, whoops, 5.6, okay? So that's 5.6, and we're gonna multiply that by 5.8, that's our height. So this is our height, this is our base. Area equals the base times the height. Okay, so that's my area. And I multiply those two together, 5.6 times 5.8, and I get 32.48 miles squared. Okay, so that's my answer for the area of that one. Oh, I forgot, I need to do the perimeter. So uh, just a real quick, real quick rewind. Wow, that's much more difficult to say than it seems. The perimeter here, what is the perimeter? The perimeter is just adding up all the outer edges. So we need to be able to identify the outer edges and then add them all up. So this would be 2 plus 2 plus 3.2 plus 3.2. So that is 4. That's 6.4. So that gives us a total perimeter of 10.4 feet. Now, it's not feet squared for perimeter. It's just feet. So just keep that in mind. For the triangle, we're just going to add up these three sides. Okay, so that's 4.9 plus plus 5.3 plus 4.3 and that gives us and i screwed it up 4.9 plus 5.3 plus 4.3 obviously i'm just typing in my calculator real quick 14.5 i could have probably done it quicker in my head it's that dependence on the calculator that's why you shouldn't become dependent upon that calculator okay this one for these parallelogram ones you're going to have to write in these sides okay so we have 2.7 and we're gonna add that twice together, and then we're gonna add in 4.4 um, twice, okay, two of those, and we get a perimeter of 14.2. Perimeter is just the distance around something. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Area is the space, all the space inside, okay? You guys can do this perimeter, fairly simple. Just know that that's 5.9. Now, these ones are trapezoids. How do I know this is a trapezoid? Well, because, what color was I using for trapezoid? Doesn't matter. We know that these two sides are different lengths. It doesn't matter what these two sides are, but if these two um, sides that are going in the same direction, that's what we call parallel, are different, if they're different lengths, then we know it's a trapezoid, okay? So again, trapezoid here, and this is probably gonna be the last one I do, the area equals the two bases, we'll call this one B1, we'll call this one B2. We're gonna add those two bases together. We're gonna multiply that by the height, in this case, the distance between the two bases, not in this case, but always, and then we're gonna divide by two when we're done, okay? So when we add 5.1 and 6.9, we're gonna get, well, 0.9 with the, makes it up to six, so that's gonna be 12. So we add those two, let me write it in first so you know what we're adding. We're gonna add up 5.1 plus 6.9, we're gonna multiply that by 7.2, and then we're gonna divide by two when we're done, and that's gonna give us our area. Area equals, I'm gonna do one thing at a time, parentheses first, order of operations, uh, trapezoids are good for order of operations. So we get 12 inside there, 
And then we need to multiply 12 times 7.2. Okay, so 4, 2, 0, 14, 7, 8, and I get 4, 6, 8, 864. I need to move that small over 1, so that's 86.4. And if I divide that by 2, I know I basically can just divide each one of these by 2. So I get 4, 3.2, and then that is yards squared. So that's yards squared. I'm getting really good at swiping and writing at the same time. Now, if I'm finding the perimeter, what I'm doing is I need to use these little slants are here. Okay, the bases go in the same direction. Those are important for area. Not important, not important for area are these two slants. And we're just gonna add up all these sides. So that'd be 5.1 plus 7.3 plus 7.3 plus 6.9 and for our printer for this one we actually get 26.6 and that's just yards not a measure of area this is also a trapezoid these things are assumed to be parallel going in the same direction they're of different lengths and they have a height in between with that right angle so this would be our b1 this would be our b2 let me just set it up for you it would be 2.2 plus 2.8 this is designed to make it fairly easy this is a great kind of tool and then we, we multiply, divide this by two and that's going to be our area don't forget perimeter is going to be fairly simple we just add all four of these together but just to show you we're going to add these and we should get five here and we multiply that by 4.5 and then we're going to divide by two so 4.5 times five we get uh 25 and then we get 22 so we get 22.5 and then we're going to divide that by two to get our final answer 22.5, we're gonna put divide this by two. We're gonna get a uh, decimal here, bigger decimal. And actually we're gonna get 11.25, and then that is miles squared. Okay, I didn't do perimeter for that one, but that's our area. Don't forget to label area and perimeter pretty clearly. Units are important. We have yards and yard squared. One's perimeter, perimeter. This one is area. Big difference there, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you need further help. And make sure to check out more videos like this right here on West Explains Best.